Welcome to this educational program. This module discusses surgical treatment for osteoarthritis of the knee. This information is taken from a recent review of the medical literature and attempts to be as comprehensive as possible. This material is independently produced and the mention of any drug or medical product does not imply its endorsement. Osteoarthritis, also known as degenerative joint disease, occurs when the cushiony cartilage between two bones becomes worn down and the bones begin to rub against each other in the joint, the area where the two bones come together. This often leads to pain, swelling, a decrease in motion at the joint, stiffness, or the formation of bone spurs, which are tiny growths of new bone. While osteoarthritis can occur at almost any joint, osteoarthritis of the knee is the most common type. More than 20 million Americans have osteoarthritis of the knee. Most people affected are older than 45 years. The economic impact in the United States is greater than $60 billion per year. In order to clearly understand how osteoarthritis, or OA, in the knee develops, let us first review some important anatomy of the joints. The knee is a gliding hinge-type joint between your femur, or thigh bone, and your tibia, or shin bone. It is made up of three compartments, medial, the inner part of your knee, lateral, the outer part of your knee, and patellofemoral, the connection between your patella and the distal end of your femur. The medial compartment of the knee is on the inner aspect of your leg. The lower end of your thigh bone, or medial femoral condyle, is jointed with the upper end of your shin bone, or medial tibial plateau. Between the two bones, there is a shock-absorbing medial meniscus, a fibrous cartilage. Sometimes, you can get gradual tearing of this meniscus associated with OA. Normally, there is a layer of healthy articular cartilage covering the lower end of your thigh bone and the upper end of your shin bone. The lateral compartment of the knee is on the outer aspect of your leg. Like the medial compartment, the femur and tibia join with each other. There is also a shock-absorbing meniscus between the two bones. The lateral compartment is less likely than the medial compartment to get OA. The patellofemoral compartment consists of the joint between your patella, or kneecap, and the lower end of your femur, or thigh bone. Your patella glides in a groove in the lower part of the femur every time you bend or straighten your knee. Arthritis in this part of the joint often presents as pain in the front of your knee when climbing stairs or slopes. If severe enough, arthritis in this part of your joint can cause enough pain to inhibit your quadricep muscle and cause your knee to give out. Arthroscopic knee surgery is one of the safest and most commonly performed surgeries in North America. Knee arthroscopy can be used to help treat knee arthritis, knee infections, injuries to the meniscus, a fibrous cartilage within a joint, and knee ligament injuries. Knee arthroscopy is a surgical procedure in which the surgeon examines the inside of your knee with a video telescope called an arthroscope. The arthroscope is a tube with a camera and a light on the end that is inserted in your knee. The viewing end of the camera is about the size of a pencil. As such, only very small incisions, or cuts in the skin, are needed to perform this surgery. Once inserted, the camera projects an image of the inside of your knee onto a TV monitor. Arthroscopic instruments are also inserted into your knee to perform the arthroscopic surgery. The surgeon then uses the camera to watch the surgical instruments. He or she will then examine all the compartments of your knee. The arthroscope and other surgical instruments are inserted into your knee joint through small incisions. As part of your surgery, several liters of sterile salt water solution are flushed through your joint. This flushing itself can be very therapeutic for your knee. Depending on what sort of problems are found in your knee, various surgical treatments can be performed immediately. More specific surgical interventions will be discussed later in this presentation. After the surgery, the small incisions are closed with one or two stitches or with small medical tapes. If you have tried non-operative treatments and your symptoms are still very bothersome, it may be time for surgery. Examples of non-operative treatments include activity modification, weight loss, canes, shoe inserts, and knee braces. You should also try to maximize the benefit from medications and knee injections prior to undergoing surgery. Arthroscopic knee surgery is best suited for patients without end-stage osteoarthritis or severe malalignment incorrect or imperfect alignment of their knee. Patients with very severe osteoarthritis will likely benefit more from a knee replacement surgery. 
Medical research shows that those with knee OA, when properly selected, will benefit greatly from arthroscopic surgery. Many people will experience such good results that they will not need further surgery. Sometimes, people find that repeat arthroscopic surgery is helpful several years after the first surgery. However, some people will not experience as much improvement as they would like and may end up needing knee replacement surgery. Having a relatively short history of pain symptoms is a good sign that arthroscopic knee surgery may be helpful for you. Locking or catching symptoms in the knee that may be caused by loose bodies in the joint or by a degenerative meniscal tear can also be readily improved by arthroscopic knee surgery. Bone spurs form as a result of the osteoarthritic process in the knee. Painful arthritic bone spurs that press against ligaments and other soft tissues in the knee or a stiff knee that won't fully straighten because of bone spurs on the front of the joint can both be treated with arthroscopic knee surgery. The specific surgery performed on your knee will be determined by the problems identified with the arthroscope. Arthroscopic surgical treatment for OA will often include flushing of the joint and the removal of loose bodies or debris. Inflamed joint lining, mobile pieces of cartilage, torn menisci and bone spurs may also be removed using an arthroscopic shaver. The arthroscopic shaver is inserted into your knee through a small incision or cut in the skin. Other treatments such as drilling or microfracture of the articular femur or tibia may be performed. The microfracture is performed by placing a sharp instrument that looks like an ice pick, called a bone awl, onto an area of bone that is missing its cartilage. A sterile mallet is then used to tap the bone awl into the area of bare bone. Several small holes, or microfractures, are then made. This is done to stimulate the growth of fibrocartilage in the knee joint. Fibrocartilage is not normal cartilage, but it can help perform the role that normal cartilage performs. Success rates for formation of fibrocartilage are about 80%. This can help relieve pain symptoms and slow the progression of osteoarthritis. The overall complication rate of arthroscopic knee surgery has been quoted at 0.56%. Some possible complications include damage to structures in the joint such as cartilage, menisci, or ligaments by surgical instruments, damage to blood vessels or nerves, formation of blood clots in the legs and even the lungs, post-operative infection and persistent post-operative pain. If you have any questions or concerns about potential complications of arthroscopic knee surgery, you should discuss these with your surgeon. Once you and your doctor decide that arthroscopic surgery is the right treatment for you, you will need to sign an informed consent to proceed. Surgery of any kind requires you to sign a consent form this form implies that you understand the risks, benefits, and alternatives of the procedure that is to be performed. There is always a small chance of reacting poorly to the anesthetic. Most commonly, people have nausea or vomiting after anesthetic. There is, though, a very small chance of serious complications, such as heart attack, stroke, blood clots, or death. This risk exists with any surgery. If your surgeon has any concerns about your general health or risks of surgery, you may be referred for a so-called pre-operative assessment where you are seen by an internal medicine specialist and or anesthesiologist. They will help ensure that you are medically optimized for your surgery. These doctors will also advise you regarding whether or not you should continue to take your regular medications in the days and weeks leading up to your surgery. It is important that you try to keep your knee from becoming stiff prior to surgery, so stay active as possible under the guidance of your surgeon. Be sure that your doctor is aware of all medications you are taking, especially any blood thinners, aspirin products, etc. If you normally have to take antibiotics before surgeries or dental procedures, ask your surgeon if you need to take them before your knee surgery. Most commonly, this occurs if you have a heart murmur, artificial valve, or other heart conditions. The night before surgery, try to get a good night's sleep. Do not eat or drink anything after midnight. This includes morning coffee, juice, or water. If you do eat or drink something, make sure to tell your doctors. It is a potentially dangerous situation to receive an anesthetic if you have food or liquid in your stomach. On the day of surgery, you must arrive at the hospital several hours before you are scheduled. You will be advised by the hospital or clinic staff as to the exact time to arrive. 
The nurses will start an intravenous line in your arm to help keep you hydrated. The IV line is also needed by the anesthesiologist to give you the appropriate medications. You may have your knee shaved so hair doesn't enter the surgical field. You and your anesthesiologist will decide together what the best type of anesthetic will be for you. The decision will be based on a combination of factors like your general health, success with previous anesthetics, and what you, the anesthesiologist, and the surgeon are comfortable with. You may go to sleep with a general anesthetic. You may have a spinal anesthetic, where you will be frozen from the waist down. You may have a local anesthetic, where freezing is injected into the skin of your knee and into the joint itself. If you don't have a general anesthetic, sometimes you will receive some medications through the IV to help you relax during surgery. Following your surgery, you will need to stay in the hospital for a few hours to help with pain control and recover from the anesthetic. You should arrange to have someone pick you up from the hospital and drive you home. You should also arrange for someone to stay with you over the next 24 hours. It is normal to have some post-operative pain, swelling, and even some bleeding from your incisions after your surgery. Your doctor will prescribe pain medications to relieve the pain that normally occurs following knee surgery. You should rest, elevate and ice your knee as much as possible to help ease the swelling, pain, and bleeding. Following surgery, do not remove your bulky outer dressing for two to three days and do not remove the paper tape dressings until the outer edges start to peel away. You may shower after your bulky dressings are removed, but you should not bathe or soak your leg for up to three weeks after surgery. Following your surgery, you may need crutches or a cane to get around. The amount of weight you choose to put on your leg should be determined by your comfort level and you should let pain be your guide for how much activity you can do. Your surgeon will tell you when and if you should start physiotherapy after surgery. If you experience any of the following, call your doctor immediately. Chills or fever higher than 38 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Excessive bleeding that won't stop and soaks through the bandages. Sudden or increased numbness or discoloration of your leg or redness or foul-smelling discharge from your wound. Also, as with any surgery, any sudden shortness of breath or chest pain should be assessed right away. The knee is a gliding hinge type joint between your femur or thigh bone and your tibia or shin bone. It is made up of three compartments, the medial, lateral, and patellofemoral. Knee arthroscopy is a surgical procedure in which the surgeon examines the inside of your knee with an instrument called an arthroscope. The arthroscope is a tube about the size of a pencil with a camera and light on the end that is inserted in the knee. The specific surgery performed will be determined by the problems identified with the arthroscope. Arthroscopic surgical treatment for osteoarthritis will often include flushing of the joint and removal of loose bodies or debris. This program has outlined some uncommon but important risks to understand prior to undertaking arthroscopic knee surgery. We have also discussed when to call your doctor if problems occur after surgery. Your doctor will advise you on a rehabilitation program after surgery and will schedule a follow-up visit for you to review results and make any further plans. This slide lists some of the many resources available where you can find more information about meniscal injuries in the knee. These current references were used to assist in the preparation of this module. All of these are available through the internet or your local medical library if you are interested in more detailed reading on this subject. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of arthroscopic surgery for treatment of knee osteoarthritis. We wish you the best for the future and thank you once again for viewing this educational program.